How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and this right here is the, what's it called here? The Fun Key S in Atomic Purple. The Fun Key S, this is a super small Game Boy Advance SP looking device. This is something I backed on Kickstarter. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I don't need one of those, but I totally need one of these. Uh, it's a device that also does Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, uh, it does Game Boy Color, but also does Nintendo Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1 even, um, all on this super tiny, teeny little device. Now again, I backed this on Kickstarter, however, I think you can maybe still purchase it. I want to leave a link to the Kickstarter in my description just in case. I paid for mine, um, it was, uh, according to Kickstarter, it was 68 euros, little over 80 bucks. Again, I totally didn't need one of these, but on the other hand, I totally needed one of these. Interesting to see what this came equipped with it. We'll go over that in this video. It is not coming with games like Super Mario Brothers and Pokemon and stuff like that. They are not included in this device. However, there is a way that you can kind of sideload more ROMs onto this, and I'll show you how to do that too. The games it does include are a bunch of homebrews. Interesting to know though, I don't know if they got the permission for some of these homebrews, but there are homebrews on here. We'll go over at least the ones that they've included with this. Even a couple of other add-ons too, like if you don't like the gray color scheme of the buttons, uh, there's some buttons you can swap out too. So what this does include is Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Gear, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket, Wonder Swan Color, and the original PlayStation. That is your PlayStation 1. If you're wondering about the source code for the emulators here, the Funky S, which I thought was kind of a fun idea for an instruction manual, plays kind of like <laughs> the, uh, the system itself. But down the list here, it says Funky OS based on Linux kernel. All applicable software and drivers, electronic design, mechanical design. It also leaves a link to the GitHub. What does that mean for you? I'm asking you the question because I don't have a clue. What does it mean? <laughs> what, what does it mean for you? I don't know. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. And if you want to transfer some files too, uh, looks pretty simple. I haven't done that yet, but we'll try it in this video. Uh, so again, the interesting thing is it does include some games, but when you click on them, they're homebrew type games here. They're not games that you're not going to find, you know, games that you saw growing up or anything like that. Maybe they play a little similar, but they are homebrews. And some of them even say they're homebrew right on the side. I'm not familiar i'll be honest with you i'm not aware on if they got you know permission or if they're just like oh no home homebrews are, are free online or whatever uh you know we can just use them i mean maybe i mean there's some great nintendo homebrews in here too including for instance Callet's gamers for kids one and two again i don't know if they had permission to grab these or maybe they reached out to someone and said, oh, yeah that's fine or if they're online i mean i guess that's cool I, I shouldn't say anything um but i've played that one before you know inversion landmaster um there's a couple of great ones in here uh including games like streamers fun one legends of alia was actually one of the best homebrews out there it comes with this for your super nintendo you have things like frog ness <laughs> but you know super boss guide and i've i've seen that one before you know, a few for Game Gear. I'm, I'm not as familiar with Game Gear. Master System as well, you know. Got a few here for Sega Genesis. All right. Even TurboGrafx-16, one of my favorites, buddy. Lynx? Yeah. All right. Why not? Lynx, Lynx Quest. That might be kind of fun. A couple for Neo Geo Pocket. Nothing for Wonder Swan Color and nothing for PlayStation. However, it does give you the option to add more. Quick example, for instance, uh, Callet's Gamers for Kids 2. Um, I'll fire this up right here. You can resume game because I was just playing a little bit ago. New game, resume game. Let's go to new game. Are you sure? Yes. Just click the button again. And here you go. And I mean, all things considered, screen looks pretty crisp. Sound looks, uh, you know, the sound sounds all right. You can click this button in the middle. That's like right up front. It's kind of hard to reach, but that's, there's your volume control. So that's all, that's up almost all the way. Here, this right here is all the way. So, yeah. And then, um, you know, buttons are responsive. I mean, I gotta, gotta give it up for that. Along with volume, you can also, you know, change the brightness. You can change the save slots. You can save slot your things. Uh, if you want to do the aspect ratio, stretch it, crop it, you know, whatever works best for you and whatever game you're working on, you can also exit the game. That's how you exit the game. Click the button again, go back to the main menu and uh, choose another game from there. All right, lay down a paper towel here just for a moment, because uh, I also, as I mentioned, you can also swap out the buttons 
for uh, there's different colors here. So you can do uh, looks like a, a whole frame here, but you can do um, yellow, red, blue, green, and it looks like you can probably even swap out the individual buttons. If you just want to pop these out and do like a classic Super Famicom uh, control scheme or something like that, different color uh, D-pad, you have the ability, you have the option. Um, I probably will later on. I'm not going to worry about it right now. If I do, I'm, I would like to go the Super Famicom route, but I think the purple with yellow combination is pretty slick. Uh, purple with green Joker colors. I mean, I, I might go that route too. I might, I might swap it out for the yellow though, just because. So I'm going to uh, hook this up to my USB for the first time. There's only like one spot to do it in really. So I use my most bent up thing. The blue light comes on, that's always good news. A little sound your computer makes is also good news. And then you're supposed to just hit this uh, menu button and it should be one of the features. Oh, let's see, look at this. Gives you a few more options. Ah, and there it is, mount USB. So if I click on that, click okay. Now my computer will see where everything is. And as you can see, if I scroll up a little bit, Ta-da! And I understand I can use OBS to capture screen, but you know what? Efficiently lazy, my friends. If there's a quicker, easier way to do something to pump out content quicker, man, I'm all about it. So if you look at NES or your uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, you can see your NES files and your ping files. Interesting. So you can even like, you know, if you want to grab these and dump them off onto your own computer, check them out later, you know, using your own emulator or load them up on a hacked NES classic, you have that ability to do so. And it's looking like drag and drop technology. So if I could just, you know, I'll put that one in there. That's a good hack. Uh, put that one in there. You know, maybe uh, Kinsey's beer run. Put that in there. All right. Well, let's uh, let's check out this. See what it looks like here. So I'm not, I'm not even gonna cut here. I'm not even gonna stop editing. Let's just go straight over to it. So I'm going to eject the USB here. Let me focus on the screen here so you can see it better. Are you sure? Yes. In progress. Let's see what happens here. Right, and there. Well, there you go, right up front. So uh, there may be a way you can add the uh, the screenshots of what each game is too. And there you go. Yeah, a little simple hack I did for Kenzie a while back. Right. Okay. Let me unplug that. So I just uh, posted. Posted. I just uploaded um, a few PlayStation games. And interesting to see that the ones I uploaded came with uh, thumbnail art already. That might be kind of nice. It may be because, and you can see the, the duplicate here. This might be the soundtrack to the game. So I just put I just put them all in the default file. I put them on their own folder. Didn't work that way. They didn't see anything. So I just put all the files just in the default folder, along with the soundtrack, along with anything else. Um, and these are files I grabbed from my hacked uh, PlayStation Classic. So I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. I'm not sure. But I'm curious to see what happens when we load up a game. Ah, uh, BIOS file's missing. That's not good. All right. There is a BIOS folder, and I bet you have to add your own BIOS, but there's, it's going to load up anyway. Oh, okay. Interesting. Compressed screen. I think that's fine, though. Oof. Big oof on this. You can't really hear it. I'm trying to get the volume. Oh, that is the volume. Listen to this. I mean, it's playing the soundtrack, but big yikes on the uh, quality of it. So if that sounded like that, I have zero hope for Parappa missing. While many games work fine with fake BIOS, well, okay, so I wonder if it's using a fake BIOS. I just have to put in the new one. You know, let's, let me, let me go ahead and do that right quick. Hold up. All right, so I just loaded the BIOS into the BIOS folder, and I still have high hopes <laughs> that this will even work in the first place. Um, as far as the music not being garbled, as far as the button timing for sure, I guess we'll find out. Because, I mean, this game you cannot emulate. You have to play this game using legit... I mean, you can't even play... It's hard to play this game using PS2, you know, the whatever, like the digital download, where it says, like, here's the original game. It's still not exactly perfect. In this game, you need that preciseness. That sounds okay. It's actually not, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Not as bad. Now, well, now that the BIOS is there anyway, let's go back to the other one. Yeah, that music garbled. 
Let's still have a look at it just in case, just for a second. And the hard part is going to be playing on this little screen. <laughs> eh. You know what? You can, you can make do with something like this. This game's a little awkward to play anyway. I still love it, though. And not just because it's called Assault Rigs, for obvious reasons. Alright, with the Fire Pro games, it's all about that timing. Right when you lock up, you have to hit your button immediately. And again, another one, most emulation. Like, I can't play this on the PlayStation Classic hacked because of that emulation timing. Screen's a little stuttery. I don't remember if it was that way on the original, but we'll see here. I'm Bam Bam Bigelow. Alright, I'm I'm very good at this game. And, uh... Yep, button timing is a little bit off, it seems. You can alter your timing, but then you don't want to do that either. I'm also playing on easy, so... It's off just a little bit, but not... Not as off as other emulators are. Interesting. Where's my taunt? Can I taunt? Where's my taunt? Which is... There it is. <laughs> I love it. And if you just turn it, if you just open it up when it's turned off, it just turns on automatically for you. And it's interesting. I wonder if it just turns off automatically. And right where I left off, too, on this uh, game here. <laughs> Go ahead, do something. Ah, oh, fine, okay. And pretty warm, too. It, um, I mean, it's been playing as I've been capturing footage and stuff, about 15 minutes or so. So, of course, it, I mean, naturally it's going to warm up, but that's, that's pretty warm to this little device. Um, that I could literally fit in my mouth, which I'm not going to do. Uh, if you're looking for ROMs, if you're looking for BIOS, I can't tell you where they are, but let me rephrase that. I can't tell you where the web archives them. Um, and I certainly couldn't tell you that of the any web archive ROM sets, web archive ROM sets, uh, for any particular system in the first place. Neat, um, 80 bucks. Is it worth 80 bucks? I don't know. I mean, I have other I have other ways of playing all these same games. <laughs> but this, I could not get it because it's so cute and so tiny and so discreet. And it is a keychain, which I'm never going to use this on my keychain. 